Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the ITX product. Today's topic is encoding and decoding base64 data with ITX. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Let's start by talking about why you would want to use base64. Take an image, for example. It is made up of a number of bytes. Those bytes can include anything from 0 to 255. Those kind of bytes out of the normal ASCII text range can interfere with transmission of that data, as special bytes are used to indicate start and end of transmission. By encoding the image as base64, you ensure that the data stream becomes transmittable over those protocols. The reverse is also true. You may re receive a, a base64 encoded file, and you've received it that way because that was the only way it could be transmitted, and you would use these ITX functions to decode the data and reconstruct the original file, in this case an image. So let's start this demonstration. In the IBM Transformation Extender 10.0.3 Design Studio, I have a project called Base64. In that project, we have a type tree called generic.mtt, and within that type tree, I have one object called text item, an infinite length text item that I will use for general purposes. Also in the project, I have a map source file called example.mms. And finally, I have a file called house.jpg. Looking on the disk, you will note that if we open the house.jpg file, it is just a standard image of a house. OK, let's open the map source file example.mms. You will note that there are two executable maps within it. Starting with the first one, image to base64, the input card reads the image file house.jpg into the type tree object text item in type tree file generic.mtt. On the output side, I apply the function text to base64 on that object. And then the output card itself uses the text item type tree object again to write out that content to a file called base64.txt. So let's build and run that map now. Build and run. Map has completed successfully. Switching back to our file explorer for a moment, you will note that I have a file called base64.txt. We can open that up in Notepad, and it starts with a few bytes that are familiar to every base64 encoding. And at the very end of the file, uh, the lines of which you will note are all exactly the same length, apart from the last one. And the final few bytes um, are always exactly the same on every base64 encoded file, uh, just to indicate that the, uh, the file has finished. And those bytes will appear nowhere else within the file. Talking of the bytes within the file, as I said before, you will note that they are standard um, ASCII letters and numbers. There are no special characters in here at all that would confuse any protocols that are being used to deliver this content, such as being embedded as part of a MIME message and sent through the email system. Let's look at the second map now. The second map is called Base64 to Image. In the input card, I'm reading the Base64.txt file that we created in the previous step. And on output, I'm using the base64 to text function to reconstitute that data back to an image. And then this card uses the text blob text item type tree object again to write the file out to a file called output.jpg. I'll just remind you that this file output.jpg does not currently exist. Let's build and run this map. The map has completed successfully. And we now have a file called output.jpg, and it is an exact match of the um, house.jpg that we started with at the beginning. In fact, if I drop to a command prompt, in theory, uh, doing a file compare of the original, 
with the um, decoded version they should be exactly the same and in fact they are. So there we go a quick overview of using the text to base 64 and base 64 to text functions in ITX to encode and decode binary data to base 64 ready for transmission via various protocols embedded in certain other message formats such as MIME. I want to thank you for taking the time to join me for this video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Subscribe to my YouTube channel where I regularly release content such as this. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.